I want to also say, of course, that what I'm talking about is the bigger context of life. If, but there's also very specific things that are useful if you are into, let's say, I hate this word so much, but a spiritual discipline. You know, uh, meaning when you are aspiring to, um, um, you know, create some kind of discipline that goes beyond just, you know, looking good or making a, a living. Um, and and so when I'm saying spiritual discipline, you know, I talk about like it's a devotional discipline. But within the context of having that spiritual discipline, all the steps of deity yoga and all the p preliminary practices are um, are trainings, right? They're trainings. Every step along the way is a training in itself of a spiritual nature, let's say, or a meditative nature, or a skill uh, of, you know, like for instance, focus, right? You can't do this without having learned how to uh, stay focused. You can't do this without having increased your bodily capacity so you can actually withstand it. If you can't focus, you will pop out immediately. So these are training tools. They are, they are um, inquiries in themselves, but they're also training tools. When I was taught, I did um, rangolis, meaning chalk mantras, where you had to trace the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over till you, you could see it in your mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so there's these, there's these things that um, you, can, you can fully develop, you know, the meditative skill, the devotional skill, the visualization skill, uh, the merging skill, the, you know, we, we've done a lot of subtle body yoga, which we didn't, we, we haven't done yet, we'll do some more tomorrow. Um, but all of those are skills in themselves, they're very useful from a development standpoint, regardless if you call it spiritual or sexual, because they are also sexual skills, of course. But all of these, these things that we're doing are directly related to sexual yoga skills. There are sexual yoga skills proper sexual yoga skills, not uh, pretend that you're a tantric goddess and, you know, <laughs> right, Bjorn, now known as Shiva, uh, you know, <laughs> at some festival, right? It's, it's like proper tantric, tantric um, sexual yoga. Um, it, it requires enormous focus, enormous discipline, enormous emptying out, because otherwise you just bring your shit, your sexual shit. Uh, into into the, the sacred sexual occasion. So visualization is super important as, as one of those skill sets. Yeah. The perception is the important thing, not how the perception translates. So for some people when they feel their body or when they start getting into reception, it's words. For some people it's sensation. For some people it's thoughts, for some people it's visuals. So the thoughts, the sensations, uh, those are the byproducts. The main event is your interoceptive awareness, meaning the understanding and feeling of your inner landscape. And so what you do is you sensitize to the inner landscape and that will show you how, how it appears, in your case visually, and then you can hone that further. But what's important is the interoception, not the visual. So you don't get stuck on, oh, yeah, I want to have great visuals. You go, I want to feel myself deeply, and that comes in the form of visuals. Right. Well, that's, that's why I'm saying it's not the thing in itself. Sometimes you have to ignore it because it's not actually that useful to follow every little sensation into the rabbit hole because you've got to get shit done. And sometimes you have the luxury to actually go there very deeply, yeah. You know? And and that's that's that can only be learned through practice as well, because you have to go, is now the time? And then the answer is yes or no, right? And sometimes it is not the time, right? So right now both of my ankles are asleep, <laughs> so um, I can't pay any attention to that because otherwise I can't talk with you. Right. 
So you can tell, but I'm going to do this just for the fun of it, right? I'm going to talk with you. And while I'm talking with you, I'm going to actually bring all my awareness onto <laughs> my ankles, right? Can you tell how far I go away if I focus on my ankles and then the sensations of my ankles being fallen asleep, right? It, it's, it's, a vi it's a palpable difference as much as I'm with you or not with you, right? So I can essentially, it's not that I don't feel them. I know my ankles are asleep, but I pay no attention to that. And I don't put my awareness into my ankles right now. I put my awareness with you. And then you and I can have a conversation while I have asleep ankles, right? But, um, but at other times, if I'm, let's say, in a, in a you know, retreat and um, I have to make sure that I sustain good posture so I can do this for seven days straight, then I would put all my attention into my ankles and either dissolve the you know, the position or adjust the position or figure out why my, you know, and then that's all I do. But I have to make a choice between deep interoception or full exoreception. And it's not an either or, but it's like 2080 or something like that. Mm. Yeah. And that's always a, a, a decision we have to make. And sometimes, of course, when pain is really strong, people have chronic pain and stuff like that, you can't ignore it all the way or not as much. And you know that because you've had chronic pain. But you can somewhat train to pull away enough so you can also do other things. <laughs>